We're seeing very big changes in uh, glacial melting across the world at the moment. As you get uh, warming temperatures, you get an increase in meltwater production on the ice surface. We know that that meltwater has to go somewhere and we want to know what's happening to the melt. So we need to figure out exactly what's going on underneath the ice so we can find out if the ice is going to flow much faster or slow down a little bit as we get more and more surface melting. The problem with working in a location like Greenland or in any glacial environment is that it's really, really difficult for engineering. We also know that the things we need to find out are located underneath the ice, and this ice can be anything up to four kilometres thick. So if you try and send an instrument down underneath the ice uh, on a cable, and then that ice starts moving quickly, that cable very, very quickly stretches and eventually breaks. So you lose contact with your instrument and you lose all the data that's stored on that instrument. So what we're doing is trying to find an alternative to instruments on the end of very, very long cables to see if we can get those data back much more reliably. Lots of people have been using uh, radio frequency to look through the ice to uh, image features that you can see underneath the ice. You send radio waves through the ice, they bounce back off the features and bounce back to the surface. So we thought, rather than sending the radio waves from the surface, can we send the radio waves from the bottom of the ice back up to the surface? The problem is with ice is it's not just ice. You have uh, pure ice, you also have melt water, you have crushed up rock, you have bits of dirt and you have snow and all of those have different radio transmission properties. So what we've been doing with our colleagues and with our, our research team is to try and characterise all those different properties and then uh, figure out the best way to send data through the ice reliably so we can get data back from these very very interesting regions underneath the ice. We had the opportunity to test our technology at two different sites in Greenland thanks to partnerships with um, two different organisations who were drilling holes through the ice right down to the bottom. Uh, the first was the East Greenland Ice Core project run out of the University of Copenhagen. We also had the opportunity to work with a, uh, a different kind of ice drilling project, the um, Responder project, which is run out of the University of Cambridge and Aberystwyth University, funded by the European Research Council. Um, and instead of using an ice core drill, they're actually using hot water, pressurised hot water, to melt their way to the bottom of the ice. Um, so again, we were lucky enough when they'd finished their, their work that we were able to have a go at putting our cryo egg into their melted hole and seeing what data we could collect when we were there. So this is cryo egg. Uh, it's got this very hard plastic case made of Delrin so that it can survive underneath the glacier. And on the bottom are the sensors. So we have sensor here for pressure, temperature, and this for electrical conductivity. And inside there's a battery and a processor, and the processor wakes up like an alarm clock a few times a day, makes a measurement, and then packs the measurement up into a radio packet and sends it back by radio to the surface. And the radio module, I'll show you, the radio module is here, here's the antenna, and this has come from um, smart metering technology it's used for smart meters in Germany, France and Italy and that gives a very robust transmission scheme so that we can send our signal through over a kilometre of ice to the surface and then it's relayed on by satellite to the UK where we can collect the data in very close to real time. So now that we have our, our working prototype cryo egg, um, we know what works really well. So now we want to take those things and then improve some on some of the things that didn't work quite so well so we have a better better model for next year. So for example there was one region of ice that uh, contained a bit more dust than we were expecting so we need to figure out how we can improve the transmission through that region. Um, we also want to optimise the shape of the cryo eggs. At the moment it is as the name suggests, a, uh, an egg shape, kind of like an ostrich egg. Uh, now we want to elongate it a little bit more to make it easier to get down a borehole. Um, so we'll, we hope to be working with the East Greenland Ice Core project again next summer, depending on how their ice core drilling is going, if we have the opportunity to use their borehole again. We also hope to be working on a very fast moving glacier up in the Yukon in Canada to try and use our sensors to understand what causes the ice to flow quickly in some regions and slower in other regions. So it's an exciting couple of years coming up for the project.